Hello guys, welcome to this episode of the Pap Podcast, where we are going to be talking about a little dealings in the transfer market this January. So joining me on today's episode, I have Luke. Luke, how are you doing? Well, I'm doing great. Better than Barcelona, I'll say. And on this episode, we have a special guest. We have Bet. Bet, how are you doing? Hi, um, uh, yeah, I'm doing fine. Thanks. Thanks for having me today. Uh, so thank you guys for joining me on this episode. So on to, like I said before, on today's episode, we'll be talking about Alexis dealing in the transfer market. So Alexis brought in two players, Daniel Was for 2.7 million euros from Valencia, who signed a contract up to 2023. And there's an option in the contract he signed that it can be extended up to 2024. And we have Renildo, who was signed for 3 million euros. And he signed a contract to 2025. And we have Tupier, who was sold for 12 million euros. And there's a 2 million add-on to that. And should Newcastle United stay up, the Newcastle are going to pay Aleti for 14 million euros. So I'm sure Aleti fans will be rooting for Newcastle to stay up. And also Sapondish, who... <laughs> I know the second yeah. whose contract was cancelled due to mutual agreement with the club and he has left the club. And I also forgot we have Samuel Lino from Portugal. Basically, he'll be joining the squad in the summer. So diving right into things. So what I was starting with you, but but what are your thoughts on Alitis transfer window as a whole? Just your overall thoughts. Uh, I was I am largely disappointed, to be honest, I'm with Atleti's transfer window, not because of the signings that we got, because I think that the signings will help the squad, uh, the squad depth quite a bit, especially Renildo on the left-hand side. I think, I think he's going to be a key player um, in, 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 the, in, the, in the ending months of the season. But um, we, we sold Trippier, right, for, for, for the sum of money, and it took, it took um, the board around month nearly a month to actually get in the replacements i think what i'm really disappointed is how long that we we took without without reinforcements because in the meantime atleti got knocked out of two um uh, possible trophies uh well i think all many Atleti fans feel the same way it's like they they do not have a replacement for tripier already lined up before they were letting him go which is kind yes. of sad like you said the that's, club that's the biggest the, that's exactly that's yeah. my biggest takeaway yeah and the club getting knocked out of the super cup in the semi-finals and also in the copa the real was sad given there have been so many injuries and the club needed reinforcement and we are in january the club had let's say for they had from august to december to have lined up they have been seeing the problem the team have been facing and they should have brought in the signings do your your trans do your uh, trans transfers early on that they waited until maybe the last week to wrap things up. So, Luke, what was your overall thoughts on the transfer? I'm very disappointed that we didn't get a replacement for Sabinic. <laughs> really, really, really disappointed. But uh, in general, we were widely part of the last uh, John Starr transfer window. I think even before Kieran left. Overall, I like Vass, especially when he was at Celta. Um, then he went to Valencia and he's seen Marve, uh, fullback role. Uh, he's a good player. He's a bit old. Um, but for the, the money, I think hopefully he should play well for us. Um, I think it was just Marv patching up the right back look and then instead of actually looking for proper way back to invest in for the future and uh, the other lad Neil though I honestly haven't heard too much about him but um, I've been looking at his stats at his um, at some compilations all I can say is from that he does look like a good player and uh, his, uh, his recent interview with the, the club and, uh, very, very happy seems like a good player Okay, yeah. Uh, just talk about Renido being a good player. Well, I think he's not our typical modern day fullback. 
who majority of them are very good offensively. He's kind of like I will not say inverse, but getting closer to that, in which is solid defensively, good aerially, averages two point above two point above two tackles and interceptions per game. He's good in area duels. Basically, what a defensive a defensive minded fullback. So how? So, look, I'm going to ask you, how do you think bringing in someone like Ronaldo on the left-hand side, who Atletico, Atletico has Lodi and Carrasco there, depending on the system Cholo uses, but how do you think bringing in, bringing in someone like him reinforces the team? Um, he's quite a very different left-back. He played the Lodi and him also in a sense. He's uh, like very great creativity towards the What's the team? Um, I don't really trust the the tray at the back anymore. With uh, Ramos and Felipe, so it'd be interesting to see. It most likely be part. Said I haven't really seen this player play, so I'm quite interested to see how he links up on the left hand side, probably with uh, Lamar or. Um, However, maybe because he's probably more attack minded, we might uh, suffer. And maybe we definitely need that trade, trade back to, to some of the defence. Overall, uh, I'm looking forward to see what the player can uh, provide. Oh, okay, so, but having known that somebody like Renildo is very solid defensively. He looks like he can reassure Aleti defensively because that's one of the areas Aleti has been struggling since. What do you think he brings to the team? I know maybe you have not watched a lot of him, but just knowing the fact that he's among the best fullbacks in Europe when it comes to defensive actions in terms of statistics, what do you think he brings to the team? Um, yeah, um, as, as, as you said, I, I don't really see much French, French football, to be honest, but um, from the statistics as well that I've... Um... I've looked at I think he will prove to be very beneficial for the squad because it covers up the defensive weaknesses that we have shown throughout the season especially when a certain partnership um, um, takes place um, but yeah hopefully hopefully this will shore up our defensive issues and um, a bit as, as what was Luke was mentioning I think this will free up a player like Carrasco Carrasco, we we know what sort of uh, threat he can be on the left hand side. Um, uh, the fact that he doesn't have to track back defensively will will increase his output. We've already seen we've already seen last season what he is capable of. We've seen hopefully we get back to Carrasco of old, the Carrasco of 2016. Hopefully he he comes back, and hopefully the, the signing of Ronaldo will will help us. Help us in not only challenge for our top four, but also actually go go further beyond. Well, like Luke said, Ronaldo in his first interview since joining the club, he spoke about the fact that he gives not only 100%, but 120%. And he talks about the fact that he's happy to be here. Someone like me who is an African, I'm also happy that we have now two Africans in the team, given Kondombia from Democratic Republic of Congo and Renildo Ren- Ren- is also now from Mozambique. So someone like me, hopefully the club can keep on signing more African players. And talk about the fact that he can free up Carrasco on the left-hand side, which is good. That means Carrasco doesn't have to track back, like you said. He can be explosive. Higher up the pitch, he doesn't have a lot of distance to cover when Aleti win the ball back in their own half because he's and also he can do more take on more dribbles given that he's he knows he has a reliable left back who can cover up for him. But going forward, adding someone like Renildo is good for the team. Well, basically, I was not a fan of the deal given I don't see it as a necessary something, but given that the club has not signed a centre back in which that is an area the club needed to address. Because we were playing three at the back system and we had just four centre backs, and there have been lots of injuries between Savish and Jimenez. Hopefully, both will be back for a little clash this weekend against Barca. 
But don't you think bringing someone like Renido can not just impact Carrasco alone, but also see someone like him also giving him also plays mostly on the left hand side and should Renido play as a left back in the four, where well, he play four at the back and say it is not a centre back pairing of Savish and Jimenez. That's basically Atletico's best centre back pairing. Not this season, but both have not played so many games due to injury. But stay him also partners one of Savish and Jimenez and Renido is a left at the left hand side. Don't you think that? It can also boost him, given maybe he, he also has less challenges to maybe dive into less duels to fight for. Yes, yes, definitely. Um, and in my opinion, the uh, the signing of Ronaldo not only not only impacts Carrasco, it also impacts the, the entirety of the back line. Um, having having a defensive wall. And the player is what we've seen statistically. It will um, it will affect not only the current pair, pairing of Savic and, um, and Jimenez, but also also Hermoso. I mean, I think with the revival of this new left back, um, we will see a shift to the four four two. I think that even when Hermoso does enter the side, his role will uh, will will be diminished. Currently, 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 Simeone utilizes Hermosa mostly for the passing, for his passing of the ball, which has been last season has been his best quality. Hopefully, we get to see more of that. Hopefully, with the signing of Renildo as well, it will free up um, Hermosa from having to commit to these defensive mistakes, as uh, you, you pointed out, Emmanuel, and he can once again operate sort of as a progressor of the ball from the back. Okay, so Alexi signed two players this transfer window, and we did talk about the players. And Luke talked about the fact that Daniel Wallace, he played as Valencia as a right back, but he has mostly been used by Bordalas as a midfielder this season. But when he did play as a right back, when he wasn't the best, let's say his Trippier is a much better player than him, but he's an experienced guy who knows La Liga and given his midfield trace he's definitely good on the ball and also can cross the ball well maybe not as good as tpa but in his earlier days he played as a as a fullback which is says why maybe previous coaches like marcelino javi garcia you utilize him as a right back so look how do you see daniel vas as a replacement for tpa um i don't think he's the best player for that position um Obviously, his as I mentioned, his mid midfielder traits. Um, he, he would have similar traits to Trippier in that sense, where he'd be good at set pieces, his crossing and his passing. But um, he'd be so at defending. Um, I think that it might cause a bit of a um weakness on that right hand side. Uh, Causes causes us to be exposed a bit. Um, now I did sort of made the mistake of uh, saying that Manila wasn't defensively good. Uh, just mixed up in my words, but I think that if we if we're playing like that, we might be a bit exposed uh, the right back. Cause uh, I know for a fact that Vass wouldn't be as effective as a defender trivia would be. But um, I'm getting up. Uh, up forward, offended, uh, getting the ball up, attacking. Uh, he's a good player. Ah, uh, okay. Well, you just said about the fact that he is not going to be very good defensively. Well, I'm not want to talk of. I don't want to talk about the statistics because if you check his statistics at the right back position, it's not bad. Is the average which would be maybe be the statistics of a right back for a mid um, club. What I mean but, is, he, he wouldn't be as good as Trippier in that uh, yeah, role. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I, like I said before, he's definitely a downgrade to Trippier, but I think Vaz, given I'm going to come back to the fact that he played as a midfielder, I think he's intelligent enough to maybe play that role. To be, I'm, to be honest, I'm, saying, I'm going to say this, I think this for the third time now. I'm not the greatest fan of the deal a little mate this window not a fan, great, I'm not a great fan of the both players, but given the clubs not sign anyone again, these two signings kind of when let me know see we needed, but uh what it is what is this at the moment? And as for Vaz, he's 
a guy who has played there before, like I said, and that, that, looking at things tactically for Daniel Vaz, in, him coming in is like great news for Marcos Lorente because we haven't seen the Marcos Lorente of last season. GP has been injured and now GP is gone and Cholo doesn't seem to trust Vashaliko that much in giving give him the role as he's starting right back and bringing in Vaz does Lorente so much good and Aleti can be effective from the right hand side with Lorente maybe playing higher up the pitch rather than and a, right, a right back or a right wing back. So how do you think about that bet? Um, I just said how do you think about Lorente playing as higher up the pitch with the with Vaz coming to the team? Um, uh, yes, I think I think the the signing of Daniel Vaz is a great improvement on the squad simply because it frees up Trippier from from the right back position, right? And um, we've seen what kind what kind yeah. of player Tripp, uh, what kind of player um, uh, Lorente is um, uh, from last season, right? He was one of our most attacking attacking threats going forward. I think something which we have to wait and see. Um, uh, one of Trippier's best attributes was linking up with Lorente on the right-hand side. Um, I think that that partnership really took La Liga by storm last season. Um, if, if Vas can replicate this, I don't know. I hope so. Because if they do manage to replicate the partnership that the, the, the previous two the previous two had, we're in for a treat. We're in for a treat from the right-hand side. Um, um, yeah, uh, maybe, maybe Vas isn't... Um, um, as good as Trippier. Trippier last season, especially, he was one of the best right backs in La Liga. But I think um, the defensive weaknesses would be shored up with a player like uh, Marcos Marcos Lorente on the wing, and we know that he can drag back. We've seen it many times, and um, he would be able to cover and help and help Vas if if things if things start going south for for the uh, for the international. Ah, uh, yeah. I agree with you on that. And looking at things from a task guard perspective, playing Vaz ahead of, say, Vashaliko is, like we said, will be what Cholo is going to be doing this season, given he's the one who agreed on bringing Vaz in. And that is key because in the two games, two Alexis games, in two, Ali, in two of Alexis' best games this season, which was against the two Rayos, one in the La Liga and the other who plays in the Spanish State Divisions, was due to the fact that Aleti were able to kind of free up Lorente, which De Paul had to drop deep from midfield, and Lorente move into the house, half spaces into their interior channels, and you have Carrasco drifting out wide. That was kind of what we saw of Marcos Lorente last season. But having someone like Vaz now, he must not be able to provide width like, say, Trippier Z. Maybe we have another player maybe providing the width like was the case against. Rayo Majan, the horror, I think. And we can have Carrasco free up things because you can have Vaz maybe supplying the passes from deep and into playing him through. Because, like you said, Vaz is old. He's, I think, 32 now. He's not really... You will not be the fastest. That means you playing against, say, a winger like Vinicius or maybe like Dembele, which are let go play Barcelona this one, this one day. He's not going to be the fastest to maybe track them. But given he's a very intelligent player, his positioning on the pitch is going to be what is key for him in succeeding as a fullback ability. Because if he's constantly so high up the pitch, I think we all know what is going to be happening. He will always be saying he's caught out of position because technically he does not have the pace to track back. But if at least if um, technique, tactically Cholo can look for a role that is going to suit him, I know he plays a, a right back, but the role in which Koke had for the Spanish national team in which he plays around the midfield area but towards the right and that is covering up for the Marcus Lorente who has gone up the pitch. But I think all what I'm saying comes down to the fact that a little player is three at the back. Because going to a 4 4 2 now will be another issue. Because it means a double pivot and so many other things come to play. So we have talked about Daniel Vaz, Renildo and how what they contribute to the team. So overall, how do you see this sign is affecting the current players or affecting the importance of, let me not say importance, but the game time of certain players in the team? Um, yeah, uh, certain, certain players, for, for sure, as we've already mentioned, um, uh, will be, will be um, happy, 
happy that these players come in. For example, Carrasco, Lorente. Um, uh, we also see having a solid defensive line at the back will mean less pressure on the forward line as well to score as many goals as they have to. Um, maybe maybe this, this um, we'll see it happen in the next couple of games. We wouldn't have to rely so much on, on the forward line. Um, um, we kind of alluded to already how it might affect Hermoso. He, wasn't, he is not going to, have to be uh, a starter now, basically. We, we'll see how this will affect uh, Lodi, for example. Lodi will actually have competition um, for the first time in his, uh, in his stay at Atleti uh, for, for an actual left-back position. While uh, players like uh, Versalico, as you mentioned, and I think mm, him slowly but surely being phased out again from the team. Um, uh, we've seen the season that um, he, he isn't the first Alico that first joined Atleti, for example. The injuries really have taken it all on the player. Ah, okay. So, Luke, was your... Okay, okay. Well, I think you have really said, especially Luzi, now he has competition. We are going to see if he can improve because, to be honest, he has been stagnant for two years now since he joined. The, I think three years now since he joined the club. We saw him that year. So he has been, he was really very good in his first season in which he bombed up and down the pitch in the back four and was really good. And we were saying, yeah, this is him. He's going to be the next Felipe Diaz, blah, blah, blah. That he hasn't really improved certain things in which were, were an issue for him in his first season with the most important being decision making and later on his crossing. Those are two areas in his in, the, in his game which needs to improve. And for a team like Aleteo, someone like Cholo, who we've looked at in his last 10 years, the fullbacks have been so important to how he plays. And basically, the fullback role in football is having more and more importance. Be the wingback or whatever, in, is becoming more and more important role in how team plays, score goals, build up and rest. So he needs to improve those two areas, which is really detrimental to the team, especially in the final third. His crossing is letting the team down. His decision-making is really questionable at times, really horrible, which kind of make little fans miss Felipe Luis more and more. So look looking at that, how do you think so look, how do you think the recent signings affect the team, the players and maybe their impacts to certain players have does it reduce the team? So to look at the, the two signings, I think one of them obviously being vast is that you have to be happy. Uh, many of the players be happy. Uh, you're anti being forward and maybe he'll return to like he was last season. But with Ronaldo coming in, I think that's a, a wake up call to Lodi and Hermosa uh, to start performing well. I think that if he gets into the sides instantly, then uh, that's, that's definitely the case. Uh, so hopefully that will uh, make uh, Lodi and Hermoso to, to up their game and we can see, we, we all know what Hermoso is on the top of his game and Lodi. So if we can get both of them on the top of our game, maybe we can sort of start fluctuating back from forward to back, three at the back. Uh, obviously, if we had a, another centre-back, if we, if we bought another centre-back, it would have been much more better but I think yeah I think Vass is good I think people be very happy with the Vass and uh, then Ronaldo uh, definitely wake up call to the, the rest of the left backs uh, well I agree on you and everything you have said so we are so this transfer window we have talked about the fact that you both of you guys both of you guys talked about the fact that you were really disappointed with how Aliti handed this transfer window. So, to, what were the things? Let me just ask you when you say Bata's plays, what were the things you could have, maybe, or the players you could have brought in, or the things you could have done? Because I think it is evident the team needed a centre back and also a defensive midfielder. But what are the areas you think that the club needed to strengthen and did not strengthen? Um, yeah, um, right back, definitely. Um, I think right back should have been addressed way earlier. Um, uh, now, if Daniel Vass should have been the player, I'm not, I'm not really going to go into that. Um, uh, there have been a lot of names going around. But considering that he was a, a cheap alternative, I think he's, he's a good winter, winter transfer window player. 
we'll, we'll see we'll see how that will will uh, develop um, um left back maybe we I think I would have preferred if we actually signed a center back instead of a left back. But um, uh, that's done. I think that the fact that uh, Renildo is, is, is a defensive left back, I think that will help a lot. So hopefully, hopefully um, that will make up for it. Um, um, I, I think, yes, maybe a defensive midfielder would have helped a lot. It would definitely would have helped Atleti shifting back into the 4-4-2. Um, um, but we'll have to see about that. We'll have to see if maybe, for example, the Condogbia will step up, will step up and fill that role. If, for example, um, uh, Cholo starts using um, Javi, Javi Serrano more, from from what we've seen, from what we've seen, the player, the player has has talent. We we just need to see more of him. We have to see more if he's ready for for the leap into the first team. Who knows? Who knows? He might actually um, step up. It's, it's been a couple of years since we've seen uh, oh, seen a midfielder yeah, coming back from the ranks again, as we've seen with Koke and Saul. Yeah, actually, it's been quite a long time since a player from the academy actually made it to the first team. I think the last one to make make it to the first team was Luka Hernandez. So hopefully, Serrano can have more game time because in the few minutes he has had, he has really impressed the fans and also. Played like a coach, coach, Nero showed the spirit, impressed the fans, and also impressed the manager. So, what was your thoughts on the same question? Um, well, obviously, they better. Right? If that's, he's technically a right back, but he's not really a dedicated right back. He's fluctuating between center, midfield, and right back. So in general, um, Mr. Aldo, in my mind, I see Vass as his more preferred area would be up at the right midfield or even up at attacking that area. So I think we should have really got a dedicated right back. Um, a centre back, just probably even recall uh, now in Paris. Not even spend that much on a centre back. We have a very promising uh, player in now in Paris who's not really uh, using his time, not really getting enough time at um, Udinese. So, yeah, I think obviously uh, you mentioned Savannah as well. He's a really good player. Lot of fight. A lot of uh, character. So, um, just to see a dedicated right back and basic, non injury prone, non mistake prone centre back would have been perfect. I am um, back to what you were, what were, what Luke was saying. Um, um, personally, I have a lot. Of, I still have a lot of faith in in Perez. I think maybe coming next season, if we do not see the renewal of Felipe, I think um, he will slot in to that um, non-EU um, uh, benchmark, and we will see him back in the team. Um, he has he has uh, played more games recently in in Udinese. I think I think he has played. I'm not sure if he's played like seven games in the last in the last eight games of, of Udinese. So he's coming more prominent again for the side. Um, and I, I have enjoyed I have enjoyed watching him play for, for Udinese. Uh, I, I, I watch a lot of Serie A and um, I think I think he's actually growing back into, into the role. Um, uh, Vas, Vas that you mentioned it, yes, um, um, he isn't he isn't injured bro, for example. And what we've seen from Trippier in this past season for the is the start of Trippier turning in Jerry Brown, which was, was a, a problem, which was why we started to rely on, on Lorente as right back earlier on the, the season. I think Vas, Vas rarely, rarely gets out injured. Yeah, I think that's a positive you, you can take from the two players a little bit in the general Tampa window is the fact that both of them have a very good injury record. Sorry, I don't know how to put this, but 
both of them have a very good record when it comes to injuries. They don't get injured off exactly, the team, exactly, yeah. which is a positive for Atletico, given the amount of injuries which have, they have had this season. So, coming back to New Empress as an option for a centre back position, to be honest, I'm with you, I'm, with the, I'm on the same pitch as you, but I trust him. And I, from what I saw in the preseason and from what I saw from the car last season, sadly, I don't watch a lot of Serie A. Hopefully, I can start watching it a lot of it as I do as the, I watch the second But he was really amazing. I would say he's basically like a most better, better defender. He's good with the ball, good at defending, maybe not as good on the ball as Emosu, but he's good with the ball at his feet. His passing rate is very good and he's aware. He has a lot of qualities. I think those qualities that made the club to bring him in as a young player, but I'm quite surprised the club has been trying to use him in recent, in recent windows to maybe buy, get other players, which is sad because we are really lacking in the centre-back department. And He's still only 21. Been, yeah, exactly. That means he has a lot of time to grow and growing on that Cholo will be a huge boost for him. We know how he can maybe follow, I am seeing as someone who is going to follow in the step of Jimenez. And coming to the new contracts, it seems Aleti may, might not give Vashaliko a new contract, but talks are ongoing. As for Felipe, it, it looks like the club will give him a two-year deal. I, be, I, for one, am not a fan of that. Not just for the fact that he has not been very good this season, but also age-wise. And I keep on repeating this, repeating this. We are in the area of top centre-backs. That means it is, I would say at the moment, it is difficult to have a very good full-back, but it's easy to have a very good centre-back. So, the club kind of gave him two years. Even Well, for me, it is not really good, but the club model has been to use experienced players to maybe get the job done. And he has worked on that Cholo, so Cholo trusts him, but I'm not a fan of it, even though I know he's a player who is very good in the dressing room. So, I'm going to ask you, what are your thoughts on maybe put the club potentially giving Vashaliko and Philippe new contract. So look, what's your thought on that? Yeah, I, I think we should just part ways with, with them. They're not a lefty level anymore, Philippe. No, I did say a couple of a couple of podcasts ago that individually, yeah, Felipe is he is a good player, but I sort of changed my mind. Um, he's he's not a uh, suit for the the level anymore. Uh, same with Rochalco. I don't think he can keep up with it. Um, I think that they're they're a board rather than uh, a blessed. Um, we have to rely on them so much because the uh, Trippier and Savage Jimenez had recent spells of injury and uh, it was just torture watching so um, I don't mind getting uh, the youth just putting the youth in uh, to fill those uh, the, the backups because with the youth you'd have um, like you've seen with Serrano uh, versus uh, like you see that you've seen them running for the ball they, 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 they want to play for Atleti, so they should have that. Yeah, exactly. I agree with you. We can't. We have been faced with injuries in which our two starting centre backs have been out, and the backups really were really poor. So we can't be keeping them because, we, because to be honest, I think we are not fooling ourselves here. Vashaliko and and Felipe are backups to in the centre back and the right back position. So if the backup are not even close to what the starting options are, there's no need to keep in both of them. It's really just get them off the books and maybe we invest in the youth in the, from, that, from the academy or we sign someone younger. So what's your thought on the same question, Beth? Um, yeah, um, I, I think in re- since these, um, these recent two, two seasons, I don't think either of them has, has proven that they actually deserve a contact renewal. Um, but Felipe, in, in his first season at Leti, he was phenomenal. I mean, I, I don't know what happened to that player. He was our best defender that season, I, I remember. But, but he, slowly but surely, he, he's fallen off. Um, um, the biggest issue with offering him a renewal, I think in my mind, because let's not forget Felipe, <clears throat> Felipe's age um, um, isn't 
an issue as much as, for example, other players, because he pl started playing professional football at a much um, older age um, uh, than most players. So um, I think he still has some gas left in the tank. But because he is um, uh, a non-EU player, um, it would prevent us from, for example, utilizing the same Perez that we've, we've just been talking about, a promising young uh, center back who has played some games as right back for Udinese, by the way. Um, um, the, exactly, like we can't utilize him because we have too many non-EU players. And I think because of that, um, uh, maybe I, would, I wouldn't be against seeing Felipe move on in the summer. Uh, Versalico, Versalico is, I think, is much, much easier to answer this question. Ever since the 2018 World Cup, um, uh, where seemingly he played injured for the majority of the tournament, he, he's become made of glass. Um, we t we've seen that, especially during his time at Inter, he barely, he barely featured, and he spent the rest of the season basically um, um, injured. And ever since he came back, more often than not, he's been in the hospital bed than, than on the pitch. In my opinion, um, uh, for a player of his age, I think he's around 30 years old, uh, it's, best, it's best we allow him to move on and look at more experienced, a more experienced right back that, um, uh, that isn't as injury prone as Versalico. Um, there, there, there have been a number of right backs that we have been uh, linked to during this transfer window. Hopefully, the links um, come again in the summer. Well, that's Atletico Madrid for you. Link with so many players by the end, they get the options. Maybe they fit option. Uh, we all know the history of Lautaro Martinez. We know the history of Bruno Guimaraes. There are so many of them linking with so many players by the end. We don't sign anybody. Hopefully. Bata can maybe go back to the guy he was when he signed Fal when he signed the likes of Falcao or Ada Duran because this, his recent transfers have really been questionable, starting with making the squad on balance at the beginning of the season. That's in the summer transfer window, we've gotten so many attackers, didn't address the and at the left back. And this window also, the club hasn't really done much. Maybe bring in options, just get the club is linked player, A player, B player, D, and yeah, they, basically no one comes in. So, we have talked about human contract renewal for certain players, and the, I think the last player we'll talk about is Suarez. What's your thoughts on giving Suarez a new contract? Bet. Um, right. I'm just, I'm basically, um, uh, to start off, I'm just gonna say that um, I am extremely indebted to Suarez. Um, uh, or the season that he gave us last season, I, I don't care. I don't care um, uh, how he's performing this year. I know, I know he has been uh, he is a shell of, of the form, his form, former self, but for what he gave us last year, I will always be indebted to Suarez. Um, uh, having said that, I don't think that he um, um, deserves a contract renewal. Um, uh, yes, we have an issue. Um, uh, Suarez is the only um, proper number nine at the club right now. Um, uh, Suarez leaving basically has to mean um, the club will have to go dipping into the transfer market for a suitable player to hold up the ball, to play as a, a traditional number nine, unless maybe um, uh, Simeone converts one of our um, uh, current attackers into this, this role. Um, uh, but yes, Suarez this season has been fairly disappointing. Um, truth be told, um, he hasn't been receiving a lot of service as well. Um, uh, it could have been better. But still, from, from the, um, the time he has been given on the ball, he, he, he's been disappointing. Yeah, I agree on you with that. Or I think we all Aliti fans are really indebted to Suarez because he was the key piece or maybe the missing piece Aliti needed to win another La Liga trophy. And he did that for us last season. But this season, he has really hit shocking levels. He's not even, I will go far seeing a shadow of the player he was last season. He needs to improve, keep on saying he can't even hold up the ball, can't even link up as he did last season. He's getting old. maybe a move away from him to someone younger would have been great. A little a link with a little a link with someone younger this summer, this resource, excuse me, this winter transfer window, which is a razor, but finally he went to Granada. Like we said, hopefully the club can bring in someone. In the summer, which can cover that position. So, look, what's your take on 
Aleti giving Suarez, who won them La Liga last season, a new trophy, a new contract. Wait, it's not like he's just 10 score. This is Luis Suarez we're talking about. So there's something happening. But maybe, as much as I don't want to say, maybe it is for the best that we part ways with him. And uh, obviously, we're, we're going to get Morata for next season. So, yeah. I'd probably, um, I'd probably rather Suarez with one leg than see another season there. So I'm niche number nine. Well, so basically, it seems like Aliti took bought a, I don't want to call Morata a bad kid, but that seems to be the case. Bought a bad boat and have chosen difficulty to really get, I'm not say rid of him, but get rid of the bad boat. Because it's Barcelona, he was linked with the move to Barcelona this winter transfer window, but nothing worked out. And with UV signing Aliti's target, Blaovic, that means Morata will be coming back to Aliti next season. Like with the club looking for a centre forward, I don't know where that leaves him that well. They like always say the devil works hard, but Morata's agent works harder. So hope we, maybe he goes to another club, we don't know. So we are going to come to the area where we answer questions. And we have just a single question for today, which is from Sam Leverage. He asks that is a little squad stronger now than it was the case on the 1st of January. So I'm going to start with you, Luke. Is it stronger now than it yes. was on January first? Eh, hey, I hope so. Um, just on from how we reacted against the Valencia, uh, the energy that was still in the match is still holding away. Still, and also of course we have a good uh, defensive. Full back and Ronaldo, uh, coming back in, we can uh, definitely improve on the left back. Um, I think just the, the problem lies between that right back area, and I think it's just it's too early to tell whether uh, we'll we'll miss Trippier with us. Oh, uh, okay. Well, it's like you said, it's hard to tell because. Aleti haven't played a game so far so bad. Do you think Aleti's squad is stronger now than it was the case again on the 1st of January? Yeah, I think, I think the squad is overall stronger because it will help out defensively, especially with the signing of Renildo. Um, that has been the issue in the squad for these past couple of months. The amount of goals that we were conceding, defensive mistakes at the back. Um, um, if just those were eliminated, we... we we would have more points coming into the next round of La Liga. Okay, well, answering to Sam's question, I think I agree with all of you guys. I think it does make Aleti's squad stronger than it was the case on the 1st of January for two things. The first is the defensive solidity we are all expecting in Nero to bring. That means improving the defense, why maybe also affecting how Aleti attacked that is with Carrasco, giving him more freedom. We talked about that earlier. And the second being the case of Daniel Was being a starting right back and that implies Marcos Lorente does not play as a right back or right wing back and plays higher up the pitch. So that those are my two reasons. So ending today's podcast, I'm going to be asking a question just out of the blue. So I start with look who is your best signing and it has done in the January transfer window. Maybe oh of ours of all January windows. Oh god. Yeah. I thought the the blue there. Um, I have to think about that. Okay, while you're thinking, I think. But well, who is your who is who is the up player for you? Okay, I, I think I think for me this is uh this is pretty pretty obvious. I think for me which which one this is. Um, uh, I uh, the player the player I um. It has to be Fernando Fernando Torres, returning back to Atletico, Atletico Madrid. From from Milan, yeah, Milan. Okay, very good option. Look, 
time it was Costa. Diego Costa. At the time, I was so happy. Uh, him coming back and scoring a um, goal, getting sent off. Oh my god, that, that, that was the best against Getafe, and then he got sent yeah. off. Oh, a memorable game. And the fact is, he was told if he does that, he's going to get sent off. And yes. It's like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. And you can see, you can see Saul from, saw from the stand saying, what is that? And that is definitely I, I, I have an, I have another well, mention now that I think about it. Oh, that's for, that's for, I think, that's, I think you are going to see my answer. Yannick Carrasco's return. <laughs> okay, just give. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yannick Carrasco coming back. Well, I, well, for me, it is Juan Fran. Ah, Juan. Wait, he was a January transfer window? I forgot. I forgot, damn. The best Aliti has ever done. Yes, yeah, you, you are right, actually. You are right. I, I, for, I completely forgot he was... I mean, he came in the, the January transfer window. It's been so long. Ah, so, thank you guys for recording this episode, for being on this podcast. And so... Thank you, Beth. Hopefully, we see you many other yes, times. Uh, thank, thank you for having me. I, I, um, I hope that we'll continue this some other time. Yeah, definitely. And look, it's always a pleasure having you here. It's always a pleasure to talk to you, Manuel. Uh, sadly, we did not talk about Korea today, so I hope you are okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad Korea was in a winter transfer. <laughs> <laughs> Next Maradona. Okay. <laughs> Definitely. So thank you. Just ask me about my favorite so much chance for next time. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you guys for listening to this episode and great shout out to Hash Hashimi from Adaliti University. If you don't follow them, go to Twitter and follow them because they are the ones who provided us with all the dealings on all the details about the chapter this a little this window so thank you guys and remember nunca near the green never stop believing